This is how a narcissist projects their shame onto others, because they can't handle it alone. You've probably dealt with a narcissist at some point in your life, whether they manifested as a jealous coworker, an angry employer, a mother who was overly proud of her daughter's recent accomplishments, or a tempting online date who vanished without a word. Conversations with narcissists often leave others feeling insecure, used, unworthy, rejected, foolish, or debased. It's thought that insecure narcissists' grandiose actions are an attempt to mask their inner insecurity. They may have issues with self-esteem, be too sensitive to criticism and rejection, and stress out about their relationships and perceived social standing. Hello, guests. I'd want to use this opportunity to welcome everyone here and offer my best wishes to those I don't know. The following is an analysis of a problematic behavior characteristic of narcissists, as well as an explanation of why it is crucial to abandon this pattern. Importantly, this is the primary mechanism by which narcissists, and especially covert narcissists, bring about their own illness. The more we excuse and rationalize their actions, the sicker they make us, and the more their way of life harms them. Their ineptitude in the face of opposition and disagreement is their greatest shortcoming. That's why they learn to bury a wide range of negative feelings. The offspring of narcissistic parents tend to develop this trait. After any domestic dispute, regardless of whether or not the child was engaged. On the other hand, narcissistic parents would behave as though nothing unfavorable had ever happened. As a result, they avoid getting professional help or talking to their child about how it has affected them for fear of being labeled as horrible parents. When parents pretend everything is okay, they protect their kids from learning what it's like to feel emotionally hurt. This is obviously unhealthy and should be avoided. It's like when your mom or dad told you, don't be hard on yourself. Instead, pick yourself up, give yourself a big grin, and go back out into the world. Repressing bad feelings and avoiding unpleasant topics can harm one's mental and physical health. Narcissists are the source of the problem because they engage in such behavior, both toward themselves and toward people who are close to or under their care. Why? This is because they are only concerned with furthering the myth of their phony identity, which may shield them from public disgrace and criticism in the short term, but ultimately spells doom for them. However, covert narcissist has an extreme urge to portray themselves as the selfless hero who prioritizes the needs of others over their own. Things become complicated, though, when there is reason to believe they are not who they say they are. The moment you see through their amiable facade and discover they're truly extremely disagreeable. After you find out how much bitterness and resentment they've been holding in for so long, how they've managed to last this long is a conundrum. But that's where we come in. Studies have shown that just having someone to talk to about how you're feeling can improve your health and longevity. Covert narcissists have a much better chance of living to old age after finding a safe person to abuse and dominate within their territory. Imagine an elderly covert narcissist who is only kept alive by the pain of others. As they are more forthright with their poisonous traits, overt narcissists and other publicly toxic people have a far greater survival rate than their covert counterparts. The covert narcissist will go to great lengths to make others believe they care about them while in reality, they just care about themselves. The constant barrage of criticism has exhausted them. This fatalistic outlook is what will bring about their demise. As a typical tactic, covert narcissists try to make us feel sorry for them by claiming they are victims of some sort of injustice. They want us to believe a falsehood, but we won't help them by believing it. It seems silly to treat them as if they were something they are not. How they have succeeded in keeping us in the dark about their true natures is nothing short of remarkable. Since we are at a loss as to how to respond to their endless cycle of love bombing and devaluation, we remain silent. People are generally good at bottling up their negative feelings. Far too much time has passed without our finally addressing the problems in our relationship. From the outside, everything looks okay. But in doing so, we sacrifice a part of our identity. To add insult to injury, the longer we stick to this lifestyle, the less likely it is that we will be able to identify it in retrospect. It's not good for you to live with a narcissist because you'll eventually stop putting your own needs first and start putting the narcissist's needs first. 
Assuming the narcissist's demands will harm our health. It is a narcissist's greatest strength to prey on our weaknesses. A narcissist may find the motivation to keep going in the face of adversity from those like us. They can't take advantage of and abuse us unless we're not here. They can only feel good about themselves if they can make us feel bad about ourselves by breaking us and making us miserable. The ability to let go of some of the negative feelings they've been suppressing is crucial to their survival. Covert narcissists must go through hell trying to maintain their fake persona in the face of ever-present criticism from those they hold in contempt. It must be tiring to put on a mask and pretend to be someone you're not. That's why I believe they're the ones to blame. It's a flaw every narcissist possesses by definition, and we must fight off the temptation to become bitter. For a straightforward reason, that bitterness can birth anger, even if the victim has been geographically distant from the narcissist for a very long time, but still harbors vivid memories of the hurt and betrayal perpetrated by the narcissist. We need to let go of our animosity and forgive one another. You can only heal and move on if you let go. The narcissist will continue to love us, no matter how badly their abuse has broken us. If we go about life harboring resentment and hostility, the world will treat us in kind. Not because we feel obligated to feel compassion for their suffering, but because doing so would simply exacerbate our own difficulties. It's destroying not just our psyches, but also our bodies and souls. Therefore, we must take precautions to safeguard ourselves from narcissists and the distressing feelings that may arise from being around them. We shall feel vindicated when we can once again have confidence in a prosperous and promising future. Keep your thoughts positive and show the narcissist that the fire they extinguished will return stronger than before. Don't be afraid to show how upset you are. If you're not feeling happy, don't act like you are. Never try to pass as someone you're not. Accept and cope with the pain you're feeling. Fear of the possible negative consequences is no reason to avoid the truth. Be true to who you are, and you'll begin to regain your self-confidence and affection. The ability to bear up under adversity is transferable to many facets of life. Narcissists or anyone else will not stop us. Thanks a ton for bearing with us. If you found this to be informative, please accept my heartfelt apologies. Your thoughts and questions on this matter are welcome down below. We can't wait to get our hands on them and read them. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more from us, please subscribe and turn on bell notifications. It means a lot to us that you're watching this. Thanks.